This week on ANN, Adventists host a booth at the largest book fair in Egypt. The president of Kenya pledges funds towards a new building for an Adventist university. And in the United States, President Obama's administration names a professor from Oakwood University a champion of change. These stories and more coming up. This is ANN, a service of the Seventh-day Adventist World Church. Thanks so much for joining us this week. First in the news, tens of thousands of copies of Steps to Christ and other Adventist publications were recently distributed in Egypt during the largest book fair in the Arab world. The Cairo International Book Fair gave members the chance to spread the love of Jesus and dispel misinformation about the Seventh-day Adventist Church. Clayton Feitosa, president of the church in Egypt and Sudan, told the Adventist Review the 16-day fair attracted 2 million visitors and was considered to be the most important annual event in the Arab publishing world. In November, the Egyptian government considered legislation that would classify the Adventist Church as a non-Christian religious denomination. The government, however, has put the decision on hold and promised to include Adventist representatives when deliberations are rescheduled. Kenyan President Uhuru Kenyatta visited the campus of Adventist University of Africa last Sunday to support the construction of a new health sciences complex. In a speech to nearly 4,000 people, Kenyatta pledged his financial support for the initiative and commended the Adventist Church for being what he called an exemplary partner in transforming Kenya. Kenyatta donated more than 2 million Kenyan shillings, roughly 22,000 U.S. dollars, toward the Health Sciences Building Project. Hundreds of government and church leaders also contributed to the project. The university is directly affiliated with the Adventist Church's world headquarters and offers Adventist graduate level education throughout Africa. The university's main campus is based at the denomination's East Central Africa headquarters, located on the outskirts of Nairobi. A professor from an Adventist university in the U.S. state of Alabama this week received an award from the White House for her commitment to higher education for minority students. Renee Elliott, chair of the communication department for Oakwood University, was named a champion of change during a program that honored extraordinary educators from historically black colleges and universities. Historically black colleges and universities are institutions of higher education in the United States that were established before 1964 with the intention of serving the black community. Elliot was one of 11 honorees who demonstrated success in helping students succeed during their college careers and beyond. Elliot said she attributes the university's success of mentoring students by putting God first, fostering and developing relationships, and instilling confidence in their students. Leaders of the Seventh-day Adventist Church in Nigeria recently reaffirmed the stance that Adventists won't be able to vote in the nation's upcoming election since the date is scheduled for a Saturday. Adventist leaders have joined representatives of various faiths to petition the government to be considerate of religious holy dates when planning elections. The petition, however, failed to sway leaders in Nigeria's government. As a result, most Adventists in Nigeria will choose not to vote in the upcoming election. While the Ebola crisis is leveling, the Seventh-day Adventist Church remains on the front lines of addressing the needs of thousands who are affected by the virus. The coordinated effort of the church to address the epidemic in West Africa has included eradication projects in Liberia and Sierra Leone. Efforts have also supported several hospitals and more than two dozen Adventist schools, most of which still remain closed. Support has come from throughout the denomination's international network, including its world headquarters, health ministries department, Loma Linda University, Adventist Health International, the Adventist Development and Relief Agency, Hope for Humanity, as well as schools, hospitals, churches, and individual donors. The church is responsible for numerous projects, including clinic responses at the Waterloo Adventist Hospital in Sierra Leone and decontamination efforts in homes and schools. The Seventh-day Adventist Church in North America recently launched a website that will serve as a communication hub for young adult ministry efforts across the territory. Visitors of the Youth Adult Life website 
will be educated and connected to resource efforts that are aimed at loving young adults. You can find out more about this initiative by visiting youngadultlife.com. Coming up, learn about a program that's empowering youth in rural Cambodia. As president of a 17 million member global church, I spend a lot of time traveling to visit our worldwide church. Unfortunately, even if I traveled every single day, I wouldn't be able to meet a fraction of our Seventh-day Adventist church family. However, I want to share some experiences about our worldwide family. This is why the General Conference Communication Department is launching a new blog called Presidential Perspectives. Now this page will be used to share sermons, articles, photos, and videos from the office of the President. So stop by and get to know us at perspectives.adventist.org. Death is the only inescapable, unavoidable, sure thing. We are sentenced to die the day we're born. Death is a debt we all must pay. Some people are so afraid to die that they never begin to live. Every man must do two things alone. He must do his own believing and his own dying. Death is not a period, but a comma in the story of life. He will wipe every tear from their eyes. There will be no more death or mourning or crying or pain for the old order of things has passed away. Welcome back, and now for more news from our global church community. A project sponsored by the Adventist Development and Relief Agency in Cambodia recently hosted a program that aimed to reach youth who live in the nation's rural areas. The Livelihoods for Life project works to increase projection for youth, especially when it comes to safe migration and anti-human trafficking. The project also creates and supports income generating opportunities to benefit youth in the region. To help keep youth away from crime, the Seventh-day Adventist Church in Jamaica inaugurated an initiative last week that puts youth to work in their communities. During the first event for Operation Save a Youth, or OSE, more than 2,000 teens and young adults beautified public areas and encouraged healthy lifestyles throughout their region. In the city of Manchester, a community center was transformed into a free health clinic that offered checkups, pap smears, and vision tests to 130 people. With the OSE program, church leaders hope to continue mobilizing young people to help their communities and inspire their at-risk peers. An Adventist church in the U.S. state of Pennsylvania recently answered the call to meet the spiritual needs of 50 refugees from Congo. According to the Columbia Union Visitor, the Ebenezer Seventh-day Adventist Church was asked to accommodate the refugees by an agency that assists the U.S. government in resettling refugees. The 50 refugees requested to be connected to the closest Adventist church before they left the area. The church responded by purchasing translation equipment and hiring a translator who speaks the refugees' native language. The church also plans to offer the refugees classes in learning English. The church is also providing activities for children in the group, clothes and food. Leaders of a homeless ministry operated by a church in southern England are soliciting prayers for its program's continued success. 
In the months of December and January, the ministry has served more than 1,200 meals. The church opens its doors on Friday nights to provide a hot meal and transforms its halls into bedrooms for the guests to have a place to sleep. On Sabbath mornings, guests are given breakfast and are invited to participate in worship services. Coordinated efforts between various churches in the community ensure that guests have places to sleep and eat throughout the remainder of the week. A group of Filipino Adventists in Papua New Guinea recently organized an event that provided free health care to members of their communities. Record in Focus has more. An initiative of the Filipino Adventist community, the City Health Care Clinic takes doctors, dentists and other volunteers to churches of different denominations every month. At the churches, one of which is in Port Moresby's Bamana Prison, the health professionals provide free assessment and treatment for a range of health issues. The group is excited about the impact they're having and have plans to expand the program. During Brazil's recent carnival revelry, church members use the opportunity to perform acts of community service. Havista has more. Em Terra de Gaúcho, essas expressões são bem conhecidas. Opa, trabalhar em feriado? Pois é, para essa turma aí o carnaval passa longe. Muito longe daqui. Não quero saber de carnaval enquanto tiver chama e tiver retiro. E quem acha que por aqui não é divertido, está bem enganado, viu? O pessoal acha que vai fazer, ah, vou fazer alguma coisa de igreja e tá? tal, um negócio vai ser parado e tal. Não é nada, aqui é, aqui é acelerado o negócio. Essa é a turma de fiéis da Igreja Adventista do Portão, em Curitiba, que troca os dias de folga por trabalho voluntário. Eles fazem parte do projeto Portão Global. Portão Global é uma ação que a Igreja Adventista do Portão realiza como missão global. Então nós vamos aonde a igreja ainda não está instituída ou aonde a igreja precisa de apoio para crescimento. O projeto, que já existe há três anos, tomou corpo. E em 2015, a turma viajou mais de 700 quilômetros para atender uma comunidade carente em Ijuí, noroeste do Rio Grande do Sul. O amor ao próximo é a melhor coisa que a gente pode receber. Às vezes, é, a gente poderia estar no hotel ou no, na praia, né? Mas eu acho que a gente está ajudando a população. E isso já está pagando o meu carnaval aqui, ajudando o próximo. O programa do Domingão foi completo. Enquanto as crianças aproveitavam para extravasar nos brinquedos, os adultos davam um check-up na saúde. Pois é, a diabetes estava em 330. Mas eu, mas o que é que eu vou fazer, não é? A senhora está cuidando da sua saúde? Tá, eu tô, eu tô acompanho sempre, sempre. Então a recomendação é que ela volte para iniciar outro tipo de tratamento, além das medidas alimentares, às vezes começar com a insulina faz tempo que ela já está com essa medicação oral que não está sendo efetiva, então ela tem que procurar auxílio médico para poder otimizar a medicação. E para quem queria dar um tapa no visual, os cabeleireiros também estavam de plantão. Eu quis cortar meu cabelo curtinho porque é melhor por esse calor, né? E a coisa assim, eu não tenho como cuidar dele melhor, né? Então eu preferi ter cortar e doar para alguém que precisa, né? Após um dia inteiro de muito trabalho voluntário e também amor ao próximo, nada melhor do que terminar o dia com boa música, você não acha? Quem se apresenta agora é o Chama Coral. 150 vozes para um show gratuito à comunidade. Vamos assistir comigo? Vem! Maravilhosa, onde o coração da gente enche de conforto e levando para nossa família. E para as próximas temporadas, o destino de mostrar amor ao próximo já está garantido. E eu acredito que há um retorno muito grande disso também. Porque é bíblico, quanto mais você dá, mais você recebe. E enquanto esses jovens abandonam tanta coisa, viajam, passam por apertos por aí para servir aos outros, o retorno é a felicidade, é o crescimento espiritual, é o comprometimento com Deus. Portanto, o sentimento da igreja é de alegria e gratidão. Eu entendo que eles estão crescendo na comunhão, porque ninguém faz um trabalho desse se Deus não estiver por trás. Eles estão construindo pontes de relacionamento, estão cumprindo a missão. Então o que eles estão fazendo é realmente colocar em prática esses três princípios que movem a igreja em toda a América do Sul. E finally in the news this week, if you want to spruce up your church's publications, announcements and initiations, but you don't have the funds to hire a graphic designer, freeadventistresources.com may be the answer to your design needs. The newly launched website offers templates that can be used to promote your various ministries and events. 
The designs come in different formats ranging from posters and greeting cards all the way down to postcards and Facebook squares. For more information, visit freeadventistresources.com. Still ahead, learn some do's and don'ts for creating an online password. But up next, find out what's in the latest edition of Elder's Digest magazine. As the prophets and teachers of the early church were fasting and praying, the Holy Spirit called Paul and Barnabas to go on their first mission journey. The church prayed together before sending them out. Hands were laid on them and we prayed earnestly. As a united church, we prayed for their safety and that God would grant them the right words to speak to the multitudes. We prayed that our missionaries would be successful in spreading the gospel. Paul and Barnabas traveled to several places. In Cyprus, they proclaimed the word of God in the Jewish synagogues. In Pisidian Antioch, almost the whole city gathered to hear the word of the Lord. When the Gentiles heard their messages, they believed. The word of the Lord spread throughout the entire region, and the disciples were filled with joy and the Holy Spirit. Paul and Barnabas appointed elders in every church and prayed with fasting commending them to the Lord. They gathered the church together and reported all that God had done through them and how he had opened a door of faith to the Gentiles. I pray, I pray for, the, for, the people, um, for the people that are poor and don't have any homes or no food at all in the streets. I pray for people to be safe. I pray that a lot of things in the world would be fair. I pray for um, homeless people. Um, I pray that I do a good job in school. As an inventor, when I think about God as the ultimate designer, it just brings my heart joy to know that the, the creator of the, of the universe can, at any given will, come up with something that has never existed before. That is the ultimate designer. And it's, and it's awesome to know that we serve a God who can design at will. Welcome back. Jonas Aheis shares a preview of the current issue of Elder's Digest magazine. As you know, Elder's Digest magazine is an important resource for all local church leaders. It's a quarterly magazine reaching more than 200,000 uh, church leaders in 15 languages globally. I have in my hands the latest edition of 2015. This is the last issue before GC session. For this reason, it's a very important edition. The cover feature is about a unique prophetic movement written by Jim Nix, the director of the Ellen G. White State. In his article, he is emphasizing our prophetic roots in Revelation 10, our prophetic identity in Revelation 12, and our prophetic message and mission as presented in Revelation 14. In this edition, you will also find an exclusive interview with Pastor Ted Wilson, the president of the Seventh-day Adventist Church globally, 
where he is presenting the worldwide church accomplishments and challenges during this quinquennium. I am sure that you will appreciate and enjoy his perspective about the past and the future of the church. We are also introducing the 100 Days of Prayer initiative, a call for each one of us to pray for the upcoming general conference session in San Antonio, Texas, USA. If you are not getting this magazine, please contact your pastor or the ministerial secretary of your conference so you can enjoy, as many others, this wonderful resource for church leaders. For this week's Tech Corner, John Beckett shares tips on how to create strong passwords to help keep your online information secure. Today we're going to talk about passwords. The password topic may seem boring, but making intelligent choices about passwords can dramatically affect whether your accounts are easily hacked. Here are some easy places to start for those who would like to do better, but aren't quite sure how. First of all, don't pick 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, or password like so many people do. Next, consider having a unique password for every service you use. Is this practical? Well, it can be if you use software like KeePass or 1Password. Those who like the sticky note under the keyboard approach can improve their situation by memorizing a personal secret which is something you need to do to the written password to turn it into the real thing. This might be as simple as adding five to each number or inserting a period between each word. If you're not gonna have a unique password for everything, at a minimum, make a unique one for your email. If somebody hacks into some random online service you've signed up for, they already have your email address. The last thing you want to have happen is for them to be able to access your email and reset the passwords on everything else. A unique email password protects your email account and limits the damage if a service you use is compromised. Third, turn on two-factor for important services. Two-factor authentication means that a password by itself isn't enough. You have to type in a text message code or answer a question. Finally, make harder to break passwords. Use more characters, use punctuation, use capitals and lowercase, use numbers, make it longer with a bunch of extra periods at the end. You can learn more about making a better password by visiting grc.com and clicking on Password Haystacks under Services. I hope these few tips will help you move towards better security when accessing the online services you depend on and enjoy. Are you looking for new accounts to follow on Instagram? Angela Taipei has a few suggestions for you in this week's social media report. With over 70 million photos added per day, sometimes Instagram can be overwhelming. If you're looking to fill your timeline with more than just food, animals, fashion, selfies, and landscapes, here are a few of our favorite accounts that help bring our minds back to God. The Adventist Church Instagram account, which can be found at the handle Adventist Church, posts pictures from Adventist News Network stories, inspirational Bible verses, and behind the scenes looks of the church's world headquarters. Adra International is also on Instagram, sharing pictures and video clips from projects around the world. This is a great way to get a unique view of the reality of the needs they're addressing and seeing the difference they're making in the lives of so many. You can find and follow them at the handle Adra International. Adventist Risk Management is still relatively new to Instagram, but they're sharing interesting tips and facts about how to keep yourself, your family, and your church safe. You can find all this at the handle Adventist Risk. In Spanish or Portuguese, the church in South America has two great inspirational accounts. You can find them at IASD Oficial and IASD Sudamerica. They'll also sprinkle your timeline with some wonderful resources. You can keep up with inspirational programs from Hope Channel on Instagram too. Let's Pray is an international community of prayer that also has a dynamic, creative, and enriching account on Instagram. 
You can find them at the handle Let's Pray Live. You'll also find a dynamic and interactive page with a unique perspective by following the Adventist Church in Jordan. You can find them at Adventist Church J-O. They are definitely worth taking a look at. Do you have a favorite Instagram account that helps inspire you, inform you, and bring your mind back to God? Let us know. Find this post on the Adventist Church Instagram account and comment underneath who you'd love to see us follow. Let's turn to David Trim for a look at Adventist history. This week, learn about the ministry of a former president of the Seventh-day Adventist Church in East Russia. Welcome to This Week in Adventist History. On February 24, 1878, the two Adventist churches and 45 church members in the U.S. state of Nevada were organized into the Nevada Mission, with John N. Loughborough, the pioneer missionary to the Pacific, as its president, John B. Ferguson as secretary, and Jackson Ferguson as treasurer. It became the Nevada Conference in 1913 and merged with the Utah Conference in 1931. As of 2014, the Nevada-Utah Conference had 9,876 church members. On February 25, 1919, Johann F. Hinter died of typhus during an epidemic in Rostov-on-Don, a city in southern Russia near where he had been born to an ethnically German family in the 1870s. After becoming a Seventh-day Adventist, Hinter worked as a coal porter in the German colonies in Russia. At the German Union session at Friedensau in July 1904, Hinter was asked to transfer to the Balkan countries. He worked with success in Romania for five years until compelled to leave the country by the authorities because of the growth of the church under his leadership was considered a threat to the dominant Orthodox Church. Hinter returned to Russia, where he was successively superintendent of the East Russian Mission, the Volga Mission, and the Ural Mission, and at the end of World War I he became president of the East Russian Union Conference before his untimely death, aged around 50. That was this week in Adventist history. Thanks for watching ANN. Join us next week for more news from the headquarters of the Seventh-day Adventist Church. In the meantime, join our global conversation on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. You can connect with other Adventists worldwide through more stories, photos, and videos. Visit Facebook slash Adventist News, Twitter slash Adventist Church, and Instagram at Adventist Church. Our good news for this week comes from 1 John chapter 4, verses 11 and 12. The passage says, Dear friends, since God so loved us, we also ought to love one another. No one has ever seen God, but if we love one another, God lives in us and His love is made complete in us. That's our program for this week. And remember, you can always visit news.adventist.org for daily news and videos. Until next time, God bless. Take care.